relationship. And we have the perfect person and perfect partner with us to talk about it is uh, Philippe Harnick. He's the chief executive assistant to Dr. Heinz Fischer, an organizational associate at the Ban Ki-moon Center for Global Citizens. Of course, Ban Ki-moon being the former secretary general of the United Nations and one of our partners of our work with Mission 4.7, which is working toward transformative education to achieve target 4.7 of the SDGs. Um, so Philippe, if I can ask you to come on screen and introduce yourself and share about your work um, and about this, this big idea of global citizenship, you know, what that means for your organization, for your work, what our students can and take away um, on, that, on that topic. Thank you, Philippe. Well, thank you, Hain. Thank you, Brodica, for having me. It's a huge pleasure being here with you today. I'm tuning in from uh, Vienna, Austria where um, our organization is based um, and where it's already afternoon and a very hot summer day. And I hope you can um, enjoy a similar kind of nice weather um, wherever in the world uh, you happen to be at this moment. Um, if I could kindly ask you to display the next slide, um, then I'll get started right away. Um, and the next slide after that, in fact. So the organization that I work for, that I'm a program officer for, uh, since yesterday, actually, before I started as an organizational associate, I've uh, been promoted to um, a program officer now, is, um, is called the Ban Ki-moon Center for Global Citizens. And how we came about is um, that the two gentlemen that you see displayed on this uh, slide um, Ban Ki-moon, uh, previous Secretary General of the United Nations, and Dr. Heinz Fischer, who uh, served as the 11th President of Austria between 20, uh, 2004 until 2016. Um, following their official roles, um, they came together, they looked back on the long friendship, and they went on a hike uh, in the Austrian Alps. Um, and they had a conversation and they talked about what they could do to, since both of them weren't ready to just retire and, and start watching Netflix from now on uh, and wanted to keep going. They had a conversation about what they could do to keep working on uh, the, the, the topics and issues they were most passionate about, namely, and we've already heard um, uh, about it uh, previously, namely the uh, Sustainable Development Goals, as well as the Paris uh, Climate Agreement, which were both adopted under the leadership um, of uh, Ban Ki-moon as uh, Secretary General of the United Nations. Um, and so uh, as a result, um, the Ban Ki-moon Center for Global Citizens was established here in Vienna as um, one of the uh, few capitals of diplomacy globally, as one of the seats of the United Nations headquarters alongside New York, Geneva, and Nairobi. And, um, and uh, recently we've also established um, an office uh, in New York, um, as well as a sister office in Seoul in South Korea. And Fundamentally, what we advocate for is governmental policy making on global issues such as sustainable development, climate action, gender justice, and transformative education, while offering direct opportunities to young change makers and high potentials such as yourselves. Um, and we aim to give you um, a voice and amplify your voices, um, as well as equip you with knowledge um, on sustainable development and the SDGs, the necessary 21st century skills, um, as well as so-called global citizen, citizenship values. And what that uh, entails exactly, I'll get to in a second. Um, uh, if I could get to the next slide, please, and actually we can skip this one. As you've already heard about the Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Climate Agreement, so the slide after that, please. Right. 
getting into the nitty gritty of our work. So essentially our big vision is to build a better, more sustainable world based on universal respect for human rights, regardless of age, gender, identity, religion, um, and nationality through adopting a global citizenship mindset. Now, what we mean by that, at its core, SG ba um, former Secretary General Ban likes to refer to global citizenship at its most fundamental core as the, mere, the, the simple action of acting with passion and compassion. So realizing that we are, as a whole humanity, we are confronted with several pro uh, issues um, that demand us to adopt um, a mindset of thinking of, as citizens, not only um, contained within our separate nation states, but more globally as world citizens. Um, to concretize this notion, there are certain issues such as climate change or the pandemic um, that have really made it very obvious that certain issues cannot be solved within the confines of the nation state. Instead, they require people to collaborate across national boundaries and indeed on a global scale um, to tackle issues that concern each and every one of us and particularly the young generation um, since it's them who will be most affected um, by issues like climate change um, in the future. Now, how do we work and, and build this global citizenry that I just spoke about. Um, can we stay on the on the previous slide for a second? Thank you so much. So um, essentially, um, our work revolves around two strategic pillars, which is on the one hand policy on ministerial high levels, where um, we uh, work uh, with uh, senior politicians such as ministers of education or the environment, even prime ministers, uh, and where we advocate um, uh, for the changes that we believe are necessary for a sustainable future. And on the other hand, we work on empowerment with a particular focus on women and youth as their voices are most often underrepresented. And we aim to provide uh, young change makers with a platform and the necessary support in making their ideas um, come to reality. Um, a few concrete examples of this, and now if we could have the next slide, please. And these are just some of our um, ongoing projects. Um, so um, one of our focus areas is um, on agricultural adaptation. While there is a lot of funding going into climate mitigation, what is often not realized is that um, a lot of smallholder farmers, particularly in Africa, um, are already feeling uh, very tangibly the, uh, the effects of climate change. So um, what we're doing is we're working um, with change makers on the ground um, and, uh, uh, um, and one project uh, or one focus is for instance in agricultural adaptation where uh, one of our change makers for instance started a project on uh, vertical farming. So how to maximize food output put given a limited amount of space. Um, and uh, we uh, support uh, these projects with um, capacity building, but also with uh, uh, advocating and promoting those efforts at um, say the UN level, 
um, each year, um, you, you probably have heard of uh, the COP uh, conference of parties um, conferences. Um, that is, for instance, one platform that we use uh, to make the voices and 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 uh, and projects of our um, uh, scholars heard. Um, next slide, please. Um, we also have a number of scholarships, fellowships, um, and executive trainings, um, where again, we focus on leadership training for uh, change makers. And, um, uh, uh, and, and, and all of these projects um, usually result in, in the participants and uh, implementing their own, uh, what we call SDG micro projects, where essentially they come up, they spot a challenge within their community um, and come up with their own solutions. And those challenges are usually related to at least one of the SDGs, sometimes uh, as many as four or five. Um, and uh, at the end, um, we produce summary videos, um, and on the next slide, um, you can see sort of the geographical spread of some of the projects uh, we've already implemented. We could have the next slide, please. Um, just to give you an, an idea in which areas we operate and um, what kinds of projects um, we've, we've worked on in the past. Now I'm mindful of time, so I'll keep the rest very brief. Um, but if we could go on to the next slide, just to make this even more concrete, um, I'd like to briefly introduce two of our uh, ongoing projects. One is um, a program that we launched this year uh, entitled Learners to Leaders, Nurturing Change Makers Through Global Citizenship Education. Um, where we realize that we see education, uh, SDG 4, and particularly transformative education as a vehicle to implement all, all of the other 16 SDGs. And that's why we, we, we give it prime uh, importance. And throughout this program, um, we selected a number of 15 young change makers from Africa, the Middle East, and Europe. And we provide them initially with conceptual inputs and theoretical um, uh, uh, inputs on the topics of global citizenship and global citizenship education. Um, and after, well, similar to this program, we in, in invite a number of speakers um, and academics and practitioners. Um, and following that, they, they, they go about implementing their own micro projects. Another project on the next slide, please, um, which uh, we're finalizing right now and which will be launched um, uh, in, in, in December of this year is a um, Green Jobs for Youth program, which is um, specifically tailored at young people between the ages from, of 14 to 20. Um, and where we've designed a whole uh, online course on what green jobs are in various fields from law to engineering to media um, and uh, how, uh, what the sorts of skills necessary are that need to be um, developed and uh, encouraged in order to um, really make the most impact. Um, these green jobs will become more and more important um, in the coming years, and um, we're mindful of that, and so this is our um, little contribution towards that. Um, this online course will, by the way, uh, launch in December and be uh, free of charge and accessible to all. So uh, perhaps if you're interested, um, you uh, can check in with me and, and once it's out, I'd be more than happy to share um, uh, the link to the online portal with you. There will be a, a, um, a skills um, test uh, as well that you can take um, 
a in the in the form of a questionnaire um, that will that will give try to provide you with an assessment of in what green job might be most appropriate for you given your skill sets, passions, and desires. Um, this is just a short overview, um, and I think I will actually stop right here. Uh, I am happy um, to uh, take any questions um, or entertain any comments. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I'd like to thank you all for your time and give you a huge round of applause for being accepted to this program and for taking uh, time off your busy schedules for, uh, to educate yourselves on topics uh, that are essential and crucial for, um, for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Philippe, for your presentation, for being here, sharing about your work and also sharing, you know, more specifically what are really some concrete ways.